Louis Prima was an American singer, trumpeter, band leader, and entertainer. Uh, he led a New Orleans style band in the 20s, a swing band in the 30s, a big band in the 40s, and into the 50s and beyond was a, an established uh, Las Vegas act. He was known for embracing and using his Italian Sicilian heritage in his music, which was uncommon at the time for people to actually bring out their background and heritage. Uh, and also for embracing rock and roll in his act uh, in the 50s, um, and for playing the part of King Louis the Orangutan in uh, the film The Jungle Book, uh, which includes the classic song The King of the Swingers, uh, which was in 1967. Uh, he released his first album in 1953 and had released about 30 by the end of the 70s when he died. Hi, my name's Dan. So this was actually Louis Prima's second studio album, uh, and it's my first time listening to it. Uh, it features, as well as him singing and playing the trumpet, uh, there's his, uh, at the time, current wife, Keely Smith, who was wife number four of five, um, and a guy called Sam Butera on sax, and his band, The Witnesses, who were a small jazz band, uh, unusually, uh, the credited a bass guitar rather than an upright bass here. Um, and I would you know, describe this as jazz, definitely. Um, so I was accused the other day of not liking jazz. Um, and I don't think that that's true, but I think I'm selective about the jazz that I like. And this is jazz that I really like. So I enjoyed this album quite a lot. So it's rooted in, yeah, so I'm always going to find when I start talking about jazz, that you're going to realize that I'm not an expert and anything that I say might not be a accurate according to the um, the intellectual jazz aficionados who uh, you know can t find nuances between all the different types of jazz and what happened when and where all the, the influences came from. To my mind, let's put it that way, this is rooted in tra uh, the trad jazz of New Orleans, um, and it feels like it had, has quite a lot in common with the UK jazz scene that was around this sort of time. And uh, there are three names that were very prominent in the UK. Uh, Chris Barber and uh, Kenny Ball, uh, somebody Ball anyway, and a guy called Acker Bilk, who was hugely famous and played a clarinet and was a real character. Um, so, it, yeah, it's that kind of jazz i believe this actually is called jump jazz at this stage um which is kind of is somewhere between the that trad that i'm talking about but kind of edging becoming a bit more modern and edging eventually into rock and roll um so one thing that i am reminded here at times is and i went to look up uh the track boogie woogie Bugle Boy of Company B, which is a song that I absolutely love, and apparently that was Jump Blues. So it's definitely that kind of style, that kind of the thing that you see of the black and white clips of the of them dancing in the fifties and the the jazz dancing that became rock and roll dancing later. So it definitely fed into rock and roll. And in fact, on this album, at least one track, uh, Jump Jive and Whale, is very rock and roll, really. And this. Kind of, I can see how this is um, bridging that uh, jazz to rock and roll um, progression. Um, of course, not being done in a thing of, you know, de deliberately, we're going to jump this, you know, bridge this gap. It's just they're making music that they want to make. It's definitely fun and it's definitely entertaining. The songs are mostly light hearted, uh, light -hearted and whimsical. Uh, my favorite. Tracks on the album probably are The Lip and Basin Street Blues, which is the first half of a uh, a medley of two songs on one track here. Uh, I, I really like Basin Street Blues. 
partly because actually um, it's a track that I have played when I was in a jazz band, but that was many, many years ago. There's a couple of instrumentals in here worth uh, pointing out, that out. Um, and it's nicely sung by all. It's not um, the kind of it's, it's not operatic singing, of course. Um, it's uh, but it's good, strong singing. Keeley's got a good voice. Louis's voice is is nice. Actually, it's very pleasant to listen to. Um, I'm, I'm now going to expand one of my theories. Um, I find it hard to describe voices often. Um, so Louis Armstrong had a voice that was really like this, um, <clears throat> and uh, there have been other voices that are very kind of pure and clear and simple. Um, and how do I describe something like Louis's voice? Uh, well, if Louis Armstrong's uh, voice was gravel, then Louis Prima's voice is kind of more sand or sandpaper. It's grit. It's got that kind of abrasion, but much finer level. Okay, it's a theory. It's not necessarily a good theory. Um, <clears throat> there are bits of uh, yeah. Back to the album. There are bits of band singing in here. It's kind of got a party feel, and it actually felt quite like a gig, even though it isn't a live album. It felt like uh, it could be. I'm guessing that his live shows were really good, um, partly on the strength of this album, and partly from the fact that he he headlined in uh, in Las Vegas for many years and was at one point the uh, the most popular Las Vegas artist. Anyway, back to this album again. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it quite a lot, actually. Um, so, as always at this point, having told you what I think, I want to know what you think. So please do let me know. What do you think of this album? What do you think of Louis Prima? What do you think of uh, my theory about Sam Pepper and Gravel? And uh, that's it for me for now. Baby, baby, it looks like it's gonna hail. Baby, it looks like it's gonna hail. You better come inside, let me teach you how to jive and wheel. Oh, you gotta jump and jive and then you really gotta jump and jive and then you really gotta jump and jive and.